So there are basically three major uh, power systems, roughly speaking. Uh, North America, Europe, and uh, Northeast Asia now join to uh, India and South Asia and to Southeast Asia. Uh, there are lots of integration among them. They're not distinct, but they are identifiable power centers. Uh, separate from them are the uh, 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 major oil producers, which have no power but have a lot of financial resources. Uh, Europe and the United States are roughly comparable in uh, every dimension except uh, military force. Uh, the United States, uh, uh, ha its military spending now exceeds substantially that of the rest of the world combined, uh, and nothing is even close. Uh, the Northeast Asia is probably the most dynamic economic region in the world, uh, China-based uh, Japan, uh, North, uh, South Korea, uh, it uh, uh, has amassed enormous uh, financial resources. Uh, in fact, it's uh, Japan, China, and uh, to some extent the oil producers have been sustaining the U.S. economy. Uh, how long they'll do it is unclear. Uh, the uh, uh, primary uh, uh, regions of uh, uh, there's plenty of violence all over the world, but the most extreme regions are uh, the Middle East region, uh, mainly because that's the major energy, these are the major sources of energy for the world. Uh, the U.S. invasion of Iraq is uh, the central part of it, but not the only one. Uh, it's, uh, and it's a very volatile area. There could be a confrontation between the U.S. and Iran, U.S attack on Iran, which uh, uh, one well-known British military historian, Corelli Barnett, uh, uh, said that would be World War III, and he could be right. Uh, the, uh, there are other tendencies developing. South America, as you mentioned, is uh, actually for the first time in its uh, history since the Spanish invasion, is making significant moves towards uh, uh, in integration. Uh, the society has been very, countries have been very separate from one another. They've been ruled by tiny, wealthy, mostly Europeanized elites uh, uh, related to the imperial societies, not to one another. And they're moving towards a degree of integration, hence independence. And they're also beginning slowly to tackle some of their immense internal problems. There's a, a huge inequality. Uh, uh, in fact, some of the most exciting democratic experiments, maybe the most exciting, are taking place right there, especially in Bolivia, where the uh, majority of the population, the indigenous majority, has, uh, for the first time, uh, entered the political arena in a serious way, uh, elected their own a candidate from their own ranks. Uh, uh, it's leading to a, a possible threat of secession by the a white Europeanized elite, which has always run the country and has most of the resources. And there's plenty of sources of conflict there, but uh, important developed many ways, in many ways the most exciting area of the world, I think. There's uh, the Bank of the South, uh, uh, which is broadly supported, could be an alternative development fund, uh, just as the Asian Development Bank could be. Uh, uh, there's uh, um, the, what happens in China and India will be, of no doubt, of enormous significance. Uh, they do have uh, high uh, growth rates. Uh, a lot of people have been uh, taken out of poverty. It should be recalled that they've succeeded in doing this largely by violating the uh, uh, rules of the uh, rules of the game that are that the Western powers have attempted to establish. That's no surprise to economic historians because that's the way the developed countries got rich themselves. Uh, uh, but there are now significant players on the world scene, particularly China, however, with in extraordinary internal problems. Uh, hundreds of millions of people uh, uh, either destitute or in serious, uh, serious economic problems, uh, enormous ecological problems. Uh, uh, India, which has 
uh, has uh, developed significantly in the last, uh, actually starting in the 1980s, uh, but particularly in the last 15 years, uh, still ranks, uh, I think, about 125th or so in the uh, uh, United Nations Human Development Index. It's a scene of enormous uh, poverty and destitution. Uh, but so they have tremendous internal problems to uh, deal with. Uh, they're nowhere near the level of the uh, uh, rich, developed Western Euro European uh, North American countries. Uh, but uh, uh, shifting power in the world scene, doubtless. Uh, these are some of the, uh, 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 China happens to be the center of a, a, a developing um, strategic system, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which uh, based in China includes Russia with its quite enormous uh, energy resources and other resources, uh, uh, India and uh, uh, Pakistan and Iran are associated, they're admitted observers, the Central Asian states are part of it. Uh, the United States has sought observer status but been rejected. Uh, the organization has called on uh, the U.S. to uh, leave the, uh, the region, Central Asian, other regions. Uh, and this is a slowly emerging power block that uh, some regard as potentially a counterpart to NATO uh, with substantial internal resources, uh, Russian particularly, but if Iran joins in uh, even more, uh, and uh, reaching out towards the, even towards Saudi Arabia, which is uh, the jewel in the crown as far as energy resources are concerned. So uh, doubtless a source of enormous concern to the United States, which is trying pretty desperately to set up a, a Sunni counterforce and to somehow control Iraq, which has turned into a total catastrophe. Uh, the, these are some, not all, of the major live issues on the global, global scene.